Thank you. 
So what is going on? It's Thursday night. Welcome to the Weekly Shred. My name is Jim Schultz. I'm going to be your tour guide this evening. And so, man, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys so much, whether you're watching on Facebook tonight or on YouTube. We theoretically should be live on both platforms. And I think I've got my comments up and ready to go, man. And I think, I think I can even bring these guys into the production tonight. So if you guys are checking this out on Facebook or on YouTube, hit me up in the chat window. Hit me up in the comments. I would love to know, you know, where you guys are at, what you guys think, and just whatever's going on in your life, man. Just hit me up with a little something, something. And uh, if you want to toss this video a thumbs up on the way in, that would be amazing. So, here's what we're going to do tonight, man. We are going to talk about how to deadlift. And we're not just going to talk about it. I'm going to show you guys how to deadlift. And so, what I want to do tonight is I want to walk through one of the demo videos that is available to all the athletes inside of Full Throttle Fat Loss. What I did was I, for one of the templates that we created inside of the course, I demoed all the exercises in one of those templates. And so I want to pull off one of those demo videos that is sitting on YouTube and it's private. So only the athletes inside of Full Throttle can see it. But I thought, hey, this would be a great, you know, opportunity for us, a great example of how to deadlift. Like it's one thing to talk about how to deadlift, right? It's another thing to think about how to deadlift, but it's yet even another thing to actually see how to deadlift. Now, of course, you know, we can't possibly duplicate, you know, actually deadlifting. And so getting under the bar or you know, in this case, over the bar, there is no substitute for that, of course, but this hopefully will kind of give you guys a start for the you know, the granddaddy of them all, man, when it comes to uh, exercise selection, in my opinion. So hit me up, man. Let me know where you guys are checking this out from on YouTube or on Facebook. And so without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's see if I can get the production going the way I would hope to get it going. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut into the video that I have sitting on YouTube. I had every intention of cleaning up the presentation on this guy a little bit. But uh, that uh, that was not to be had here before the uh, the production went live. Ten minutes goes fast, man. You guys uh, you guys might be surprised. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna walk through every element of this video. So it's only about a 45 second video, but there are so many different pieces to the puzzle when it comes to deadlifting that we're gonna walk through this guy. So the first thing that I want to point out is you know we can start the video you know just just quickly here. Look at my stance. So look at where my stance is. So before I even go down to the bar, so now I'm going to pause it right there. So if you look at where my stance is relative to the bar, we're going to have another look at this here in a second. This is what is referred to as a conventional deadlift, right? For all you deadlifters out there that have been pulling and deadlifting for a while, you know that this is a conventional deadlift. Now, before we continue on here with the... Before we continue on here with kind of the video tutorial, let me go ahead and pause and hop onto the soapbox for just a brief second here. When you deadlift, you can basically deadlift one of two ways. You can deadlift conventionally, or you can deadlift in more of a sumo style. In sumo style, you'll have wider legs and your hands will be inside of your legs. And depending on, you know, which stance you choose to assume, a conventional stance or a sumo stance, it's obviously going to target different muscles primarily in your legs. And so, you know, your lower back, your posterior chain, your traps, your grip, your forearms, your lats, like that kind of stuff, it's going to get taxed fairly equally depending on, you know, whether you choose conventional or sumo, it doesn't really matter. But the muscles that you want to target on your actual lower body, like, you know, in your, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, you know, obviously your, your, your inner quads, your inner thighs, 
that's going to be very different depending on whether you pull conventionally or you pull sumo style. Now, obviously, we're just going to do a conventional demonstration tonight. Which one do I think you should choose? Honestly, I think you should try both. I think most people should try both. I think you should experiment with both, uh, either conventional or sumo. And depending on, you know, the biomechanics of your structure and how you uh, were built, how God created you, one of those two is probably going to feel a lot better than the other. And for me, I've tried both. I've, I've pulled conventionally for many, many years. I've tried sumo, and I don't know what it is, man. I just, I can't get there. I don't know what it is about sumo deadlifting, but I just, I just cannot get there. It never feels good. It always feels like just pure porcelain when I'm trying to pull that bar up, even though it feels like it's such a shorter distance when you pull sumo. But I don't know, man. Are you guys, are you guys sumo or conventional out there? Let me know. I would really, really love to hear, you know, where you're at uh, when it comes to pulling, you know, sumo or, or, uh, or conventional. That would be, I'd be very curious to know where you guys are at. Let me know in the comments, in the chat, or the, uh, or the comments on Facebook. If for no other reason, just to see if I actually do have this working correctly with pulling the, the comments in the chat into the production. So, all right. So, the first thing I wanted to do there was I wanted to go ahead and kind of walk through my stance. Okay, so the first thing is you can see that my stance is fairly narrow. Okay, so let's kind of go forward just a few seconds here. And you can focus on my grip. So we're going to get a closer look at my grip here in a second too. But notice my grip. So there's two things about my grip that I want to highlight for you guys out there. The first thing is look at the, the proximity of my grip relative to my legs. And you'll notice that my grip is right outside my legs. Like, again, we're going to get a front view here in a second. You're going to see it really clearly. My grip is basically adjacent to it's touching the outside of my lower legs and there's a reason why that's the case right and you basically just want to use kind of you know i guess this would be physics i don't know for all my physicists out there that are watching please express apologies granted to me if you don't mind when you are you know when you grip something more closely you're going to have more power you're going to be able to apply more force to that object than if you were to grab it like this or grab it like this, or grab it like this. I mean, this is why a lot of power lifters will do like a snatch grip deadlift because they're trying to, you know, improve a weaker link in the lift. They're trying to, you know, get stronger in a disadvantageously leveraged position. Disadvantageously leveraged. You probably didn't think you were going to hear that tonight when you tuned into the shred, but that's what happens, man. When we get when we get cut loose on Thursday nights, you really you just don't know what's going to happen. But by going right outside of our legs, we're effectively able to put our body, put our, our position into a highly leveraged position where we can generate a lot of power, we can generate a lot of force. So that's the first thing that I wanted to bring up here. The second thing that I want to bring up here, I'm not even going to move the, the video forward at all. Notice how I have a double overhand grip. So notice how my grip, it's not mixed, it's not alternate, it's double overhand. Now that is by design. There's a couple different ways you could do this, right? I mean, double overhand grip or mixed grip. I mean, I would love to know where you guys are at on that too, right? Let me know, conventional or or sumo. And also let me know, are you are you double overhand or are you uh, are you kind of a mixed grip guy or gal? I would really love to know where you guys are at. So I've tried both across my training career. And here's kind of where I settle on that. So you know, let's hop back on the soapbox here for a second. I wanted to get a setup to where I could be in a little window next to the video, but I, I didn't have the, the timer ran out. That was the next thing I was working on. And I was like, oh, snaps, I got 18 seconds left. I should probably not. I should probably not do that. I did mixed grip for a really long time. I did mixed grip for a very long time. But I, so I'm right-handed, right? As I'm sure many of you out there are also right-handed. Not that left-handed people don't exist, but we are different. Because I'm right-handed, I noticed that as I went heavier and heavier with my, with my lifts, with my pulls, I would naturally favor having my right hand open. I was just stronger in that position. And so, I mean, you know, you would like to think that in theory, oh, I'll just keep switching, I'll keep flipping, I'll keep doing whatever. Like, yeah, on paper, that looks terrific. And in theory, that's really easy to do. But it's a whole nother thing when you're in the gym and you've got a PR, you know, that you're staring down 
but you've got a big set that you're ready to do. And you're like, man, I kind of want to nail this set. Like, I kind of want to go dominate this set. I don't really want to lollygag through this set. And so what am I going to do? I'm going right hand open. I'm going right hand open. I'm going left hand closed. So over time, you know, you do that for a session. You do that for a week. You do that for a cycle. It's not going to make a difference, right? You do that for five, eight, ten years like I did. It's going to make a difference. And the difference that it made for me as a competitive bodybuilder is I actually started to see uh, an imbalance in my lat development. Now, I don't know how much of this was from the deadlift, but I know some of it was from the deadlift. And so I was like, wow, like I'm looking at my body and I look like I'm like, you know, like off center, right? Like, I look like, man, you got to straighten yourself up, bro. Like, what are you doing? Right. And, you know, my game is not deadlifting, right? My game is not how much can you pull? Like when we all step on stage on the day, nobody cares how much you can lift. Nobody cares if you even lift. All that matters is how you look, right? So it's just a, it's just a tool to get to the end game. And so I had to check myself and I had to say, all right, listen, man, what am I going to do? Am I going to spend the next five, eight, 10 years with left hand open, right hand closed? I don't see that happening. I don't see any world where that is a feasible solution. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to switch to a double overhand grip. So now I have the same grip every time. And so, you know, at some point my grip started to give out and I had to start to rely on some straps. And for me, usually that's over like 315. I, I start to break out the straps because my grip just gives out and it gives out long before my back muscles or my leg muscles give out. But again, I'm not a power lifter, even though a lot of my training might be power lifter style-esque. I'm not a power lifter. And so at the end of the day, I'm like, hey, straps, I don't give a crap, right? I'm going to use straps and they're going to help me achieve, you know, the, the, the goal that I'm after here. But for you guys, should you go mixed grip or should you go double overhand? I'll leave it up to you. I will absolutely leave it up to you. But I will just caution you that if you don't choose double overhand, if you do choose a mixed grip, I would be very, very uh, intentional about evening out that grip about making sure that you do, you know, have right hand open, left hand open in even number of times because you may end up with, you know, unbalanced lats. You may end up with, you know, uh, pulled biceps. I mean, there's just a lot of things that can happen, right? If you, if, you can, if you consistently favor one side over the other. So, all right, so let's, let's proceed here with the video. So double overhand grip, fairly narrow stance. All right. So now... Look what happens next. So we get a we get a deep breath, we inhale, and we rock back. So I want to pause it right there. So in fact, let me go back. Let me go back a couple of seconds here. So you've got the you've got the deep inhale right there. That's very, very important, right? This applies to deadlifts, this applies to squats, this applies to bench press, this applies to basically any of the main lifts. You will be more powerful if you hold your breath during the rep. You will be able to generate more force, more torque, if you hold your breath during the rep. So the, 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 the sequence, the process, the pattern that you should follow is deep inhale, rep, deep exhale. Deep inhale, rep, deep exhale. If you're not currently doing that, I can assure you, it is going to feel super awkward the first time you do it. It's going to feel like, man, I am not doing this correctly. Like, I don't know what this cat was talking about, but there is no way this is correct because, man, like, <laughs> this just feels really awkward, right? Like, this just feels really, really unusual. Well, you will adjust. You will adjust and you will, you will be able to get to a situation where you are generating more torque, where you are generating more power. You just have to give it some time. Give it some time to, you know, give your body some time to adjust to the new sequence of breathing. The second thing that I want to point out here, so let's hit the old, the old play button. So the second thing I want to point out is you notice that I rocked back. I sat back into the movement. Now, why am I sitting back into the movement? Well, there's a couple of reasons why I do this. So let me go ahead and start that again. And let's watch this one more time. So now just focus on the rocking back into the movement. So you see I inhale and then I, I, I bring my body back into position, almost like I'm sitting back into a chair. 
And if you look at my body, you know, right there, we're going to, we're going to hold it right there for just a second. So we can kind of dissect where I'm situated here as I'm about to start the rep. The reason why I sat back into the rep and the reason why I rocked back into position, it's effectively twofold. Number one, it does allow me to generate some momentum off the ground. So I do have a little bit of movement on the bar before I even go to do any work. So that by itself is going to help give me a little bit of an advantage, let's say. But that's honestly not the reason why I do it. The reason why I do it is because by sitting back like this, by rocking back into position like you see me do, it allows me to not only stay back on the lift, so I'm not lurching forward. I'm not you know, on my toes where the weight is just pulling me forward, which will very frequently happen when you get up, up, up in weight. So it, it forces me back on my heels, which is a huge positive. But the other big positive is it engages my hamstrings and my glutes. And so by rocking back into position, like in the position that you see on the screen right there, my hamstrings are locked. My glutes are locked. They are loaded. They are ready to go. And that is where I want the emphasis of the lift to be. That is effectively the target muscle that I really want to focus on. here. And so by rocking back into position, it allows me to take the emphasis off my lower back. It allows me to take the emphasis off, you know, kind of that danger zone, you know, of that, that lower spine area. That, that area is going to get worked. Don't, don't get me wrong. That area is going to get some indirect, you know, targeting just by the very, you know, nature of the movement. I don't have to go out of my way to do that. And by staying back like this, it puts the emphasis where I want to put it. And it takes the emphasis off of, you know, the areas where I don't want it to. The next thing that I want to point out about where I'm where I am right now, so kind of the next two points that I wanted to bring to our attention here tonight is number one, if you look at my back, my back is very neutral. My back is very neutral, meaning I'm not I'm not hunched over, right? My shoulders are not forward, my shoulders are back. They're pulled back in line with my back. My back is also not arched. So I don't have a I don't have a huge arch in my back to where I'm putting unnecessary strain on my lower back. Like, I mean, if you're, if you're sitting right now and you're watching this, right, just arch your back. Just go ahead and arch your back right now. Like, if you, here, I'll even, I'll even come on screen really quick. And so, like, if you, you know, like, like if, I, if I'm just sitting here and I arch my back like that, I mean, just do it. You'll feel, you'll feel the tension in your lower back, which is not a bad thing, but it's not a thing that you want to focus on right here, right? There's a time and a place for that. This is not the time, nor is this the place. And so, by keeping more of a neutral spine, I don't have that arch in my back. When I used to deadlift, and this is how people, I think a lot of people used to deadlift, you know, arching your back was kind of the way to go, right? An uh, in, in accentuated arch in your back was the way to deadlift properly. But since that time, we've all learned, we've all learned, we've all grown, we've all gained experience, and we've realized, yeah, this is probably not a good way to do this because I'm putting, you know, undue stress on an area that can't handle huge loads before it just breaks and it snaps, and then you have lots of issues. So the next thing I want to point out here is if you look at my, so if you look at my, let's see here, if you look at my head, you will notice that I am looking, uh, my eyes are my eyes are up, but that's just that's a thing that I always do when I squat or where I bend or I deadlift. But if you look at my head, my head is forward. So my head is neutral. My head is my, my neck is not arched back. Like I'm not doing this. I'm not doing one of these jobs, right? Where my, where my, where my neck is back. This, this used to go with the arching of the back, right? Where you would arch your back and you would, you would have your head up. And so you would look to the sky to kind of, you know, offer up some mental mnemonic to remind you to lift the weight higher, right? And this is what I did when I was younger. And this is what I was taught to do by all the big guys in the gym. That were deadlifting enormous amounts of weight. But then again, we've we learned, we've grown, we've realized, yeah, that's probably not a great thing to do for your neck. It's probably not a great thing to do for putting the loads, you know, on areas where you really don't want the loads to be. And so if you look at this right here, do you see that my head is very neutral and my head is basically just looking forward? I mean, some people like to look up, some people like to look forward. Some people actually like to look kind of down to keep their neck even more neutral than what you might see here. 
And so that's definitely an option as well. And as I continue to improve and try to grow and just get better myself, I may actually experiment with kind of having my gaze on the ground and then allowing it to come up as, as the weight comes up. I think that could put my neck in an even safer position. But uh, this is how I have deadlifted for many, many years. And so it's not going to be an easy thing to change. But uh, now that I've got the old man joints, I think I, uh, I think I got to give it a shot. So, so, okay. So now we are finally ready to do the rep. So let's take a look at this rep. here. I'm actually going to do a few reps. Let's just take a look at a couple of these reps. So we go up, we go down, we go up, we go down. If you notice on each rep, I want you to focus on the breathing of each rep. It's the same each time. Again, inhale, rep, exhale. Inhale, rep, exhale. Inhale, rep, exhale. You notice that that is the same each time. Again, we're trying to follow that pattern that we have established to allow us to safely and effectively create and produce a lot of force on the bar. So if we watch those reps again, let's see if I can get this. So if you focus on the breathing, you see how I am following the same pattern each time. You can also see at the very top, one thing I also want to point out, I'll pause it right when I get there. So look right there. You can notice, I don't do a great job of accentuating this, honestly, but at the top of the, the movement, you can see that I'm trying to drive my hips forward, which will throw my shoulders back to kind of finish the move. And I'm doing that mainly because I want to get as much lat development out of this as I possibly can. Again, I'm not a power lifter. I'm a bodybuilder. And so I want to utilize these highly effective movements, but I want to utilize them in a way that's going to serve me best. That's going to, you know, help me reach the goals that I have for myself. And it's not necessarily lifting a ton of weight, although you know, obviously that, that's fun and that's a part of the process. I want to try to exhaust my muscle fibers as much as I possibly can. So by, by pushing, by driving my hips forward, it allows me to finish the movement fully and try to get as much out of this as I possibly can. So that is one thing I wanted to point out here before we kind of move to, you were going to see a slightly different view here in a second. So, all right, so what we're going to look at now is we have the front view of my grip and my stance. So let me go ahead and pause it. So I'll pause it right there. So the two things that I would like you guys to focus on here, this is kind of a recap of, you know, kind of what we talked about earlier but you're just seeing it now from a different view. And so what we have here is my grip is shoulder width apart and my, my stance, I'm sorry, my stance is shoulder width apart. My grip is just outside shoulder width apart. And so this is just another view of what we looked at earlier. So you can see just how narrow this is. It's pretty narrow. Right. When you conventionally deadlift, this is pretty commonplace. This is, you know, what a lot of conventional deadlifts look like, where your stance is pretty narrow. Maybe we'll have another shred or another tutorial where I do work through some sumo stuff. I don't have as much experience with sumo deadlifting. And so hopefully I'll have a couple of things to share, but it won't be anything like what this looks like because I've just done this for so many years. I've picked up all the little, you know, tips and tricks and, and things along the way. And so here with this conventional deadlift, again, feet about shoulder width apart, grip just outside shoulder width apart. And then if we look at this, if we, if we go a little bit further in the video, the last thing that we want to focus on here is if you look at the, if you look at the, the top of the movement, you can see just how far I'm going back with my shoulders. But I also want you guys to focus on, and we could have seen this from the other angle too, but I also want you guys to focus on Let's actually do this again. Well, here, no, we can do it from here. Let's actually, let's go right there. So focus on the speed of the eccentric. So I go up and then I go down quickly. I go up and I go down quickly. I go up and I go down quickly. Okay, so let's stop right there. So oh, let me see. If I can. All right, so let's stop right there. So this is, so this is something that I'm really a stickler about, man. And I really have a big, big issue with this. So it doesn't make any sense to me. None whatsoever. And correct me if I'm wrong, man. Hit me up in the chat. Hit me up in the comments. I still don't know if what I'm doing works. So you guys got to help me out here, man. Leave me at least just one comment, one chat, so I can see if it'll work. 
do not, do not overly control the descent of your deadlift. There is no reason to do that. There is absolutely no reason to do that. Now, you don't have to slam weights. You don't necessarily have to just, you know, drop it from a free fall, although you could do that. And I mean, you know, if you're at a very, very serious gym, they will not only allow you to do that, they will have you equipped so that you should do that. The reason why you don't want to control or at least overly control your descent on a deadlift is you know what you're doing? You are asking for an injury. You are asking for an enormous injury. Now, at 135, like you guys see on this video, whatever. Do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. 185, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. For some people, at 225, 275, 315, 315, do whatever you want. It doesn't make a difference. But once you start getting up to some really high weights, right? Now, for some people, 275 might be heavy. Like, I, I got it. But for some people, 365, 405, you know, 455, 495, 500 plus, 600 plus, right? You are just asking to just rip apart your lower back. You are just asking to have your lower back just stop working. If you are too overly cautious on the way down on a deadlift, you have so much weight, you have so much force that is pulling against your lower back that it just doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. Now, again, if you don't want to slam the weights, I totally get that. And I'm not suggesting that you do slam the weights necessarily. Although, if you are in an environment that is okay with that, that's what you should do. If you are in an environment where you are not only going to be, where you're going to be allowed to do that, you should absolutely do that because that is how you deadlift correctly. But if you can't do that, then hey, set yourself up, put some pads underneath you, do something so that you don't have to be overly cautious on the way down. Because if you do that, I'm telling you from experience, you are asking to injure yourself. You are absolutely asking to injure yourself and uh, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty at all. So, I don't know, guys. That's it. That's how to deadlift on the weekly shred here. I hope you guys got a little something from this, man. I really hope that this gave you guys a little bit of, you know, insight into how to conventionally deadlift. Maybe it gave you some tips and some tricks that you hadn't considered with your own deadlift. And so, when you go to deadlift, whether it be tomorrow or this weekend or, you know, next week or whatever, I really hope that this kind of helped you out. And, you know, it's funny because... it. My doing a deadlift tutorial is a little ironic because I'm not I'm not deadlifting right now. I haven't deadlifted for over three years. And the reason why I haven't deadlifted is because I injured my hamstring a few years ago and I've been rehabbing it ever since. Uh, not super well, mind you, but I've been trying to rehab it ever since. I'm actually finally now feeling pretty good. So I think I'm going to take a go at this at some point in the next couple of months. And so, you know, thinking about the content for the Weekly Shred, I just kind of had a hankering to talk about you know, how to deadlift. Cause I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have to revisit this video myself so that I can remember how to deadlift. So I thought maybe I would share this with y'all and I could benefit from it a little bit along the way too. So you guys are the best, man. If you're watching this live, you guys are the best. If you're watching this on the replay, you're still the best. If you guys want to hit it with a thumbs up, that would be amazing. If you want to leave me a comment after the fact, you have a you know comment or a question or whatever, I'm more than happy to help you out in any way that I can. If you want to share this on whatever platform you happen to be watching it, that would be amazing. Make sure you head on down to the description and scoop up some free stuff. You know, you've got the fat loss formulas down there. You've got the cardio plan is down there. Those guys are both free. You can check out Full Throttle. That is definitely not free. And this demo video was taken from a small snippet of that course. And then you can check out more videos. Check out more videos on the YouTube channel. Check out more podcast episodes. And uh, that's it, man. That is the weekly shred. We will see you guys next.